Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the notion that the serpent, because we talked about this last time. Yeah. That's a very good observation. That's cool. We talked about last time that there's nowhere in the Bible that says the serpent was Satan. Now, this, by the way, here's an interesting, let's just talk about this. Who has, anybody have a Bible here? You have your phone? Okay. This is the NLT. Do you have, can you Google? Google 1 Timothy 2.14 and then put the word Strong's, apostrophe S. Strong, apostrophe S. Strong's, I can't remember Strong's first name. His, his last name was Strong. And he has a, a concordance. For years as a kid, I said, concordance. I was crushed that I'd been saying it wrong. Oh, well, it's just concordance. Um, but concordance gives the, in this case, will be the Greek translation of this verse, probably. Or just another translation. Look, you, some of you look up Strong's. Here, Rankin, let's give you this assignment. Look up in the New Revised Standard Version, which has just been updated, by the way. It's so funny that the Bible is updated. 2.0. NRSV. If you want the, this is exactly what the words are, the NRSV is where to go. New Revised Standard Version, which has recently been updated. 1 Timothy 2.14. Let's say what, see what the NRSV says. Because I believe <sighs> there are different types of Bible translations. The Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew and some Chaldee, and then was later translated by Jesus' time. The Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament. Now, the New Testament is written all in Greek, except Matthew probably wrote his original in Aramaic. But, so, we have to translate it because we don't know the languages. If I can ever get to the place, maybe when I'm 70, when I don't have much to do, I'm going to go back to school and learn Hebrew and Greek. I'm working on Spanish at the moment. Yo hablo español un poquito. But that's about all I can say. Um, but anyway, there are different types of translation. There are word for word, like Young's literal translation. It, it even puts them in the correct order from the original. Like Spanish, for example, is different. In, in the United States, we say, there's a big black dog. In Spanish, you say, Pero, uh, grande, uh, negro, right? <laughs> There's a dog, big, black. In English, you say, big, black dog. Same thing in Hebrew. You guys stopped caring a long time ago. But if you want the word for word literal, like Young's literal concordance. But like the message, the message is what it would be if a guy knew Greek and had smoked a bunch of marijuana and then translated the Bible. It's not really true. But it's, it's a paraphrase. It's a paraphrase. It's like free-flowing, like, and then Jesus went to Jerusalem, and he had a great time. <laughs> Things like this. It's not in the original text. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. But what the NLT is is kind of a thought for thought. Okay? And see, I may be wrong when we read these translations. I'm setting all this up to say that the original text, I do not believe, said it was Adam who was deceived by Satan. The King James said, for it's Adam that was deceived. It doesn't say by Satan. So let's see what the NRSV says. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived There you go. So here's something I want you to be very careful, post in certain scriptures. This translation itself in this verse is an interpretation. There is not deceived by Satan in the original text. Did you read Strong's? Did it get... Uh, There you go. <laughs> what you're saying is, Mark, you took 10 minutes to say something that I, if you stop talking, I can find that myself. Yeah. <laughs> but there, this is an interpretation. Now, if you want to know where people get the idea that the serpent in the garden was Satan, is they get it from the book of Revelation. When it talks about Satan's, the dragon in the sky, which again, do we take the Bible literal? Was there really a dragon in the sky? No, there wasn't. If there wasn't a dragon in the sky, it always bothered me when I was a kid because the dragon opens its mouth, it's trying to catch that woman, and it doesn't shoot fire, water comes out of its mouth. 
See, that proves that it's not literal because everybody knows the dragon spit fire and not water. If the dragon has water coming out of his mouth, he's going to put out the fire and he's going to be useless as a dragon. But that dragon took a third of the stars, which was the angels, and John, in writing it, said, that old serpent, the devil. And so people went, oh, Genesis, Revelation, the serpent's the devil. And the NLT translators thought you should know that. Okay? How about another question? Why? Well, he didn't just talk about women in general. Because he, for example, and see, these, I've been arguing since I was very young because women aren't supposed to teach in the church. The trouble is, in the same book, Paul writing to Timothy says, use a little wine for your stuff. It actually starts with King James, drink no longer water. Do we take the Bible literally? Don't drink water. But use a little wine. For the first time, I got Rachel's attention. Use a little wine, King James, for thine oft infirmities. Just like the first time I went, like I went to Peru, and they said, don't drink the water. Well, I was actually speaking in a church way out in the middle of nowhere, and I was thirsty, so I drank the water. No big deal. But why? Because your stomach's not used to it. Timothy's not from Ephesus. He's in a place where don't drink the water. It's the first century, for heaven's sake. Don't drink the water, Timothy. Use a little wine. Drink some wine. Well, the church, churches that I knew, the preachers that I knew, suddenly wanted to talk about culture. They wanted to talk about exactly what I just said. Well, you know, in Ephesus, the water wasn't very good. Yeah, exactly. I extrapolate the principle, but not the exact thing. I don't drink wine or not. I don't care if you drink wine or not. We can, let's, let's have that discussion sometime. But that verse isn't God speaking to me. It's inspired to be there. Yeah, I believe that. But it teaches me certain principles. But he is talking to Timothy. Um, like he's, this is where we, where Paul says to Timothy, find faithful men, teach these faithful men that will be able to teach others also. He's trying to teach Timothy how to scale. This church just started with 12. Okay, Timothy, I'm going to die. You're going to die. Let's pass this on. So he's giving him instructions on how to pastor a church. And that's why when you read the whole letter and you come to this part where don't let women teach, you shouldn't be shocked with, well, that seems out in left field. No, he's giving certain instructions on how to get the gospel message out quicker, quicker, quicker and more efficiently without the obstacles. Huh? For that, for that area at that particular time. Now, there are places that you would... Here, here's a story. We talked about wine. Here's a story that... Uh, 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 Actually, the guy that started the Bible school I went to tells of going to France in 1951 or two or something like that. <clears throat> now, my uncle often joked, if you'd say, would you like some coffee? I say this today. Nobody gets it. It doesn't stop me, though. Uh, somebody will say, you want some coffee? I will say, oh, no, thanks. I'm a Christian. In the 30s, 40s, there were holiness groups, and there probably still are, that believed it was a sin to drink coffee. Okay? Now, <clears throat> they of course also, and this was, this particular preacher was an assembly of God preacher. Very strict, uh, old time, holiness type of people living separately from the world. But now he's at a minister's conference in France. Guess what they do at dinner time in France? They drink wine. Which, of course, was a huge no-no in the United States. In a particular time, in a particular place, among a certain group of people, if you showed up at church with a glass of wine and began to teach, no one's listening to you. You see? Nobody's going to listen to me. I'm drinking wine. Is it wrong to drink wine? I don't know. We can have that discussion. But if I want to get something across to this group of people, in this particular place and time, I'll have to not drink wine while I'm doing it. 
Now he's at France where they're drinking wine. And one of the French ministers leans over to him at the table and whispers, I understand some of our brothers in America drink coffee. He thought they were going to hell. He thought they were worldly. He thought they were sinners as he's drinking his wine that they're drinking coffee. And this guy that's telling the story simply said, yes, I'm sad to say they do. But if you went to France and tried to teach, as many teachers do today, you know, in a modern church, they show up with a coffee cup because it's cool and hip. And they got the little, what is the thing called? Yeti. They have a little Yeti thing with coffee and they're drinking. Well, at that time in France, if you showed up with that, they're not listening. That's what Ephesians is talking about. If a woman shows up, it's just going to be like Charlie Brown's teacher. They're not going to understand a single thing she's saying because that's a woman. And where do you think they keep the prostitutes? Okay. Any other questions? Well, why does that say that? Oh, see, when I put that verse, I didn't think I would have to actually talk about that. I should put the surrounding verses. Okay. This, in 1 Peter 3, this is, see, we'll get into, uh, I don't know if we should get into this. There are, there are, there are certain, how do I say this? Here, I'm going to say this so you know I'm a heretic. I'll just come out. This is Mark's coming out party. Um, there are certain books in the Bible that I put more weight on. See, this will get me kicked out of every Baptist church in the United States. I believe, <laughs> I believe the entire Bible. I believe it was written for a purpose and I believe God had a hand in it and in the fact that it's in the collection that we have. There are, Paul, for example, this may take more than five minutes. Feel free to leave at any time. And we won't, we'll just get into the edge of this where you'll be really confused and then you can go home. Paul, for example, wrote 13 letters. Of those 13, maybe help me rank in seven, I think, are agreed upon as they are authentically from Paul. Okay? All theologians say, yep, Paul wrote those. The other six, there's an argument. Timothy is one of them, by the way, where they say, we think somebody, one of Paul's disciples, assistants, later put that together. Okay? I like the arguments. I don't think they're valid. I believe Paul. I believe Paul wrote all 13. I believe he wrote 14 because I had Hebrews. <laughs> okay? When we get to heaven, you'll all see I'm right and think I'm really smart. But so Paul... When I read Timothy or when I read Ephesians, for example, Ephesians is contested among theologians with valid reasons as perhaps not being authentically Paul's. So I read it and I understand it and I receive benefit. It's useful for me, but I don't jump up and down on it. Do you know what I mean by that? When I build houses and they put in the floor joists, I say, I'm going to give it the fat man test. And I jump up and down on it to see how much it shakes. So with Ephesians... I, I like it, but I just walk real quietly. Does that make sense? I'm using <laughs> these analogies. So, Peter's the same thing. And let me say this out loud. I've never heard another human being say this. I believe that Luke, in his uh, interviews, he, he got who Jesus was. And I believe Paul pretty much got who Jesus was. As you read through the book of Acts, 20 years later, Peter is just starting to get it. 10 years after Jesus rose from the dead, Peter still thinks, I'm not supposed to go to the Gentiles' house. He has to have a vision. So when Peter says something in Acts chapter 1 about, well, we have to have 12 disciples, and so we're going to roll the dice to see which one God chooses. I don't go, oh, that's the way you're supposed to hear from God. No, Peter doesn't get it yet. Well, it's in the Bible. Exactly. What is the Bible? It all comes back to, what is this? So I don't listen to Peter in Acts chapter 1. I listen to him in Acts chapter 10 a little bit more. But here, is this on tape? 
I don't think Peter ever truly got what Jesus was trying to say. I don't believe he completely got it. So when Paul says something, I listen a little more than when Peter says something. It doesn't mean I don't believe Peter and get something useful, but when I read 2 Peter and Jude, which are basically the same thing, the last chapter of 2 Peter and Jude, they're like the same thing, and they're talking about the vengeance of God and all this. I'm like, well, that doesn't sound like Jesus. Okay? So Peter will say some things that I don't think sounds like Jesus. Okay? But this verse, he's talking about the flood. He's using the story of the flood, which we should talk about this next time where people will say it must be a historical fact because Peter is referring to it. Okay? It must have happened. I will show you some things that Paul refers to that did not happen. And because an ancient writer refers to a story doesn't mean that that story must be historical. Okay? I'm all kinds of rabbit trails. But Peter is talking about the flood and that these eight people were saved, Noah and his family, when the flood came, and that that ark is sort of a type of Christ is what he's trying to communicate. And he's saying, it's sort of like baptism. You know, the water washes over you. They went through the water, and they were saved from the things that were in the water because of the ark. The ark is sort of a type of Christ. So in that sense, baptism kind of saves you. Does that make sense at all? That's what it's talking about. But Peter's hard for me to understand. Peter, by the way, and then we'll leave. 1 Peter 2.24. Anybody that used to be a word of faith know what that is? Come on. 1 Peter 2.24. By his stripes you were healed. We quoted that all our lives to talk about healing. And if you read the rest of the chapters, all the verses around there, it's not talking about healing at all. doesn't mean you can't use it. The word of God is useful. But it's not talking about that at all. Okay, thanks for being here. You only had to listen for way too long, I know, but eh, 70 minutes. Very impressive. Two weeks from today, we'll be back. We'll talk about this some more, and there'll be a band. And that's kind of the only difference. 